good afternoon and welcome back to the garden sort of a bit overcast today but it's lovely and warm so we're quite happy with what we've got at the moment now we've been asked how our artichokes are doing so I'll just show you those and then we'll go and put some of those spring onions in now they're growing well they've been enjoying this bit of rain we've been getting we even got a ladybird on that one, not. And they're growing well and I'm beginning to think I might have put them a bit too close together, but we'll see how they go. They should be alright there. The other thing, just quickly show you the rhubarb, if you remember we cut it back. It is now really grown up and I think we will take another crop off it we don't usually take one off this time of year but it's grown that well but I think it's worth just taking it they're lovely red stalks we can uh, we'll have a, a small harvest of them now let's go and get these spring onions planted I have got this far doing the row but I held off so I can show you how I do it they're the Swedes they're doing fine something's having a nibble at the leaves but I can't see any white fly or anything no I can I can see a white fly on there perhaps a bit of soapy water will clear that off now what I do I take a trench out with the hand trowel, about the depth of the hand trowel and a little bit wider. And put the soil at the sides. Like then what to do then, I water the trench. I just put a bit of water in the trench, just make sure there's some water down there. It soon runs away. Here we are, it's about long enough. I make this compost myself, what I put in the trench. It's basically compost from the garden compost bin, put through a screen, a little bit of soil with it as well, through the screen. And I add a little bit, uh, not a lot, of waste compost left from the potted etc so I put that in as well but it had been used so there's no real strength in it to that I put some calcified seaweed just a handful to the barrel load and a little bit of blood fish and bone to give it some some oomph if you like because they'll need once you put these in they want feeding and growing fast to get those nice onions there it is look <laughs> The white lumps, they're the seaweed, and it's not so bad. It's good stuff because you've got our own compost in there, which always helps. That's enriched it quite well, but it looks well. Anyway, what we do, we fill the trench, put plenty in, and then keep this handy because you need a handful now and again. These are the onions we're going to set. I put little groups of seed into the cells and grow them up as quickly as possible. Sometimes they're slower than others, but these have grown quite well. And then we pop them into there. Just pop them out. You can see they're, they're ready. And then I don't need a trowel to do it, I do it with my finger, I make a little square like that. Pop them in and then bring it round a little bit higher up the onion because when we water etc it's going to shrink back. Just pop them in. You can put them side by side if you want. If you're a bit short of room you could go right up tight. The, We've got quite a bit of room. Just do another one. A bit dry look. And then in we go. And this is where 
what to do then. I just put a bit of compost at the side of them. Or oh, the compost mix, it's not a compost, it's a compost mix. And before you know it, it's all it's a weed there, look, two weeds there, them. And then I just put the soil over it, put a bit of weight on it, that's all, then leave it. And if I could go and show you while I put a few more in, the rows we did a few weeks ago, you'll see how quickly they grow. If you haven't got your own compost in your bin, because it's that funny time of year where you haven't got a lot made, just use the a compost that you, you'll have to buy some if you have to, but that would do, providing you put a little bit more blood fish and bone or the seaweed if you can get it. Put that in to give it a hand to, to bring these up. They're very, very heavy feeders, so the more you can put in, the better. The other warning is, this time of year, if you're using bloodfish and bone and you have a lot of ants, when you put the bloodfish and bone in, those ants will fetch it and take it to their nest. So, bury it. Uh, we'll just water this end because that was done this morning. There you go, water it in well. Remember we've wet the bottom. And this is just to make that compost nice and wet. I do tend to water all these young plants every morning and night. But I do it first thing in the morning before it gets hot. And I do all the young plants. I just water them till they get established and then I leave them to finish on the road. So that's that line of onions now complete. These few just here are the red ones and while I was planting them I went and had a cup of tea and when I come back the birds had pecked the tops off look. Likewise the lettuce plants that I've just put in they've got the net on just to keep the blackbirds and the pigeons on. Now we're also while we're down here we're going to lift about half of these beetroots that are making good size so we need to get them out that will be all we can cope with because we've also got some calibrese to lift and freeze down as well so we only want half we'll just loosen them and see how we go see what they look like they'll do they're all right we'll put them in the truck and then take them wash them and show you them washed now, I should just keep my eye out for this. Look, that's a little one there, so we'll leave that one in situ. We'll take, we'll take the bigger ones. I haven't really seen the crop because it's always been under that net, so let's see what we can get. I'm sure that one will be fine. There you are. We'll take the bigger ones for half. They get too big to get woody, don't they? These? That one's not so bad. Let's go up here. There's two there with both of those. I'll go up and down the row and dig the rest, and then we'll show you what we've got. There you are, that's a good trug of beetroot. I've taken the larger ones and left the other ones to grow on a little because we're a little bit busy and we can't do with doing all this lot at this time. That time of year where we've got to think about the spring crops, like the spring cauliflowers and the spring cabbages and the kale etc. As you can see there we lifted the the lettuce from there and I followed it in with some kale. 
Now we do use a little bit of kale but it's mainly grown for the chickens when there's nothing else for them green they absolutely adore the kale. In this bottom greenhouse I have set some winter crops I'll show you those next week because I've got quite a bit to do this week. Now we'll go up and we'll have a look at the calibrees that's ready. I'm just going to lift a root of the second early's potatoes. Cara they are, they're doing very well. And we actually went to a garden centre yesterday. They were selling off these tomato plants for 20p and I felt a bit sorry for them it's a bit late for what we want but if it's an Indian summer say and the blight stays away we'll have some late tomatoes but as we was coming out he says aren't you going to buy some of our these old tomatoes you are on our tree so we went to get some pansy seed so I can get that in ready for the round the house and come back with three tomatoes because they didn't have a pansy seed there. <laughs> so I've just popped them in here after the potato crop. It's good soil, they should be all right, providing the late blight stay away. We should get a tomato or two off them, or not. I'm going to dig a root of these second earlies up. I will leave them on the ground and let them dry and then I'll fetch them later because uh, I don't want to take them this set. In fact there's one already out there. <laughs> now if if I'm doing Cara next year and I want some seed potatoes that'll be one of them. That's ideal size and a bit of green that's fine. Let's see what we can do and what we've got, if I can get under them. Uh, I spiked one. That one I just spiked it a little bit, it'll be fine. We'll put them just here keep them away from that they're not bad these tops will be dried and burnt obviously I don't keep I don't compost them we just, that's only half the root, there's the other half there, look. So we'll take it on. Oh, I hope I don't squash one again. I hate spiking them. Nice potatoes. I'll take that one as well. I'll just lightly fork round, see if there's any we've missed. There's bound to be some somewhere. There's one. We'll leave those to dry while we lift these other crops. And um, I don't think that's bad from a one potato set, so if it carries on like that, I should be quite happy. We did lift the Swift, the first earlies, the same as what we put in the pots. But I got double from the pots what I got from out of the soil. So next year all the first earlies will be grown in pots from now on. Now we're just going to pop up, I'll get the knife, rinse my hands and we'll lift that tops off that calibrese. We're going to take some of this calibrese that's, that's heading, that's hearting up quite well. 
and we've just seen there's a cauliflower coming as well I do think it's this overcast and wet weather we've had has brought these on because they shouldn't have been ready really until the autumn but we'll take them now the calibris will freeze and on a coldish day we'll have the cauliflower with a dinner luckily there's only one cauliflower at the moment now I'm going to take this cover off this is the first time it's been removed since I actually put the plants in but I have not lifted it I've not watered it I just did my ground prep planted them and that's been it until now here we are with the calibris the lovely heads that one's not so big but that one is the same size so we'll take them and show you when we take them what I should do I should cut the top off put a cross on the stalk and hopefully we'll get some more later have a look what we can do clean the knife Can you see there's weeds in there look so does it get weeds yes it gets weeds I'll take these yellow leaves off as well so yes it gets weeds as you can see not so many but not so bad so let's put a cross on it if I can not too deep and that will dry out and hopefully they'll put more florets around down the stem. I know it, it's nice to be cutting them, but I'm a little bit disappointed because I didn't want these till autumn. I'm trying to plant for the season, but the season's defeating me with the weather. There you are then, a nice calibris. We'll take the rest and show you what we've managed to get out of it. We're going to take this cauliflower here if you can see hopefully the rest will sit for a month or two because you don't want them yet these are cauliflower clapton f1 planted late so they came in the autumn but i'm afraid mother nature had different ideas i'm just going to cut it off for the moment i'm too big to get too far in but we'll take it anyway there we go but what I want to really show you is because we haven't lifted this net right through the growing season how clean it is not a thing on it look so it pays to put your insect mesh on early and keep it on that's a nice clean early cauliflower if we left it in for a couple of weeks it would completely blow and the calibris two four six seven of but they will have to go in the freezer we can't eat that lot this time of year we've come to where the mini coal cabbages are lovely little cabbages never let you down and we want two because they're very good in cold slaw. It would be ideal if we could take this big one, but it doesn't feel tight enough. I don't know what type of cabbage it is, but we'll take these. There you are, the classic mini coal that is. Again, not being lifted, absolutely clean as a whistle. I'm so pleased with that. And this one. And I don't know if you notice, for some unknown reason, there's not so many weeds in this one. Tight as a drum and clean as a whistle, you can't fault that. Now, I just thought I'd show you these plants. They was actually in my Christmas stocking and I planted them. Absolutely wonderful. And they're worth keeping now. There are lots of five on that one we said we'll grow them and see what they like but now i found that the bees love them they'll be here every year for them now another little job for you that you really need to be getting on with this is the celeriac 
needs its leaves taken off from the bottom and then the bulb or fruit or celeriac will actually grow faster then. I've actually done that sign. These are what we pull off, look, they're, they're sort of broken and split and they fall flat so you have to take those off. Like we do just before we lift them, we do the same thing before winter. But if you do it now, it helps to swell this up. You just go around, it's not... And if you look at them, I can't, I haven't got you one here to show you. If I show you one that's coming off and they're all split round there, that comes off as well. No, I can't show you one, they're too far in. I'm just going to do these other two and then that's the lot done. Can you see this one? That's It's difficult to see really, but it's split at the bottom and it wasn't going down, I just pushed it down, but I'll take that and that one off as well. This one's going down as well, look. Take that. These, just strip them off. There you go. Now we've got them cleaned off around the bottom. I always like to give them a good feed once you've done it. So we'll put the big heavy rows on. This is the feeder use. Green Future Organic. They're actually a tomato feed but I think you'll find more seaweed in there than anything else. And these respond very well to seaweed. It'll come out quite quick but we need to give them I just had a butterfly come next to me, I was a bit worried then. And there's a, a nettle there once pulling out. This one's gone down since, look, can you see that? Where that one there has fallen, that's what you want to look for. If it's split like that, just take them out. And then, as I say, a good seaweed feed and they respond very well to it. While we're passing the onion bed, I'll just show you that the wind and the heavy storms we've been having have knocked quite a few of the onions over. And there's nothing I can do for them now. I just have to leave them until harvest and then sort them out then. Now we've come to this little tunnel that's behind the main arch and um, I actually planted the celery in it this year and again this is the first lift so there might be a weed or two but we also want to have a look at the celery as you can see it's pushing against the net so there must be some good celery in there somewhere we'll just lift this end and check this end now we've had a look I don't know if you can see, they're not huge but they've got some lovely long stems on them. There is a name somewhere, here it is. And it is Starburst F1. And as I say it's been in there and not been touched but it's actually, I can't remember actually watering this so it hasn't done so bad. But most of them have got some nice long stalks on them. Now I'll take this one because it's nearer, but there is a lot of celery in there. It shouldn't take an awful lot of lifting, I hope not, because this is not a lifting fault. There it comes. That'll come out nicely. Put a root on that. I'll have to fetch my knife. I've lift, cut it off rather than trying to lift it. And I've just reminded they should be green with a hint of pink at the bottom, which they are. But we'll take that up and get it cleaned up and show you it cleaned up. That's uh, There's some length on those. That'll do nicely. 
as you know we've been harvesting loads of salad crops the lettuce the cucumber the tomatoes so what we haven't had to add to it is the celery so that's our first celery and we're quite pleased with it now we've finished the harvest and it's something different from the salad and fruit we've been harvesting with you just lately so I'll go through and show you what we've harvested. Calibris, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. They will go for freezing, obviously, they're far too early. But as you can see, beautiful crop will freeze perfect. The beetroot, uh, we've took the biggest of the ones we had, so we've got some more to follow they'll come in they'll go to they'll go to bottling they're just the right size actually for it potatoes second early scara good crop i like that and the amazing celery for the first one of the year which is as it should be then we'll taste it and let you know whether it's uh, ready or not too many coal, they're beautiful cabbages, they are. Hard as a rock for coleslaw, beautiful coleslaw. And they grow in a few weeks, they're absolutely amazing. Clapton cauliflower, that's completely too early, but never mind, we'll make good use of it. And as always, some courgettes. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. It was something different. I didn't know we had a cauliflower until I went down there and saw it with you. And I was quite amazed that we got one that big this early in the season. But never mind. It's a funny season, as you know. Now, that'll be it for this week. Now, remember, we must start and plant the winter crops. So look round at your seeds and your seed catalogues, etc get the spring veg ready because if you don't grow it you've got to buy it and we don't want that the way things are do we so take care everyone and we'll see you shortly bye now